What's up guys? Today we're going to talk about flow buttons, both physical and digital. So one thing that I feel is very underrepresented in flow is flow buttons. Uh, and, and like I mentioned, right, we have physical ones and we have digital ones. So the first way to explore buttons is to go ahead and go check out some templates. So let's go ahead and click on templates over here. And then we can go ahead and we even have this separated out. So there's button templates. Okay, uh, so these are all digital buttons that you see right here. Uh, when you see this little finger icon, this is the digital button flow. And, and I'll show you the difference uh, in a minute, okay? So some of the templates here, send myself a reminder in 10 minutes, whatever, get today's weather forecast, okay? Send me a push notification with my current location, email a note to yourself. You know, those aren't super useful there, but create a new contact in dynamic CRM. Uh, add a new task to wonder lists. Uh, upload photos directly from a flow button, like taking a picture directly to a SharePoint list. Instead of having to do the upload yourself, uh, you could actually create a flow to do that. Create new tasks in Asana, track your work hours, okay? Uh, and then actually a really cool one that I've done is uh, I've, I've built a flow button to replace having to carry around business cards. And uh, if you stay to the end of the video, I'll actually build that so you can see me make that real. Okay, so back to uh, templates here. You can see there's a whole bunch of them. And, and these ones all are the digital button. That's one thing to know. Whenever you see that, that finger press, that's the digital one. Now, let's go ahead and look at some that use the physical button, the little flick or BTTN, right? So for those, we actually would search for flick, F-L-I-C. Now, these here are templates that work with the physical button. There's a lot less of them um, because these buttons offer a lot less inputs. And uh, actually, that's the next thing that we should talk about. So uh, for inputs, uh, the physical button has three, okay? It has a single click, it has a double click, and it has a press and hold, okay? So three different inputs. So this gives you much more, uh, a more limited range of things you can do with it, right? So. Let's go ahead and now that you saw the inputs for the physical button, let's go ahead and go into the Flow website here and we'll show you the inputs for a digital button. I'm gonna go ahead and go to My Flows. I am going to click New and Create from Blank and then I'm gonna click Create from Blank again right there. I'll dismiss that error that I had because we don't need to worry about that right now. Now, you can see one of the default options here is the Flow button for mobile. Let's go ahead and click on that and then choose the trigger, manually trigger a flow. And so this is how we set up all those buttons on my phone. Each one of these is a manually triggered flow. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And now you can see there are a range of inputs. So there's text. Now for a lot of the things you're gonna do, you're just gonna use text. Um, it's, it's the easiest input to work with. It's just a string, it just passes a string. And so that's easy. Um, the next part is a yes or a no. So you can have the user make decisions, a yes, no checkbox. Uh, you can also choose to upload a file or take a picture. So that's the thing to know. If you want your flow button to take a picture, it lives under the file input. The next is email. If you are connected to AAD, uh, you can have this populate email addresses within your tenant. So you can very easily uh, consume and, and choose email addresses of coworkers. There's also a number input. Uh, so if you wanted to ask the user for some sort of number or value or price, uh, and then a date picker. And so you can see here that, that this actually can build out a decent little form 
uh, which which you can do a lot of things with where you can upload files or pictures you can ask for text or email addresses you can ask for values and and so a lot of these if we go back to the templates here you can see let's go ahead and, and jump into one of them here and see what they ask for right so add a new task to wonder list let's go ahead and make this that together no problem now I hit continue it makes this flow for me now we can see manually trigger a flow using default parameters okay so all it's asking here is a task title and so now we have gone ahead and seen all of the different input types for the physical flow buttons over here or the digital ones that show up on your phone so now that we've done that I'm going to go ahead and build the business card flow with you so that you can see how it's made and you can also stop carrying around business cards. I know Vistaprint makes them super cheap and all that, but like, I just, I don't want to carry around, carry them around anymore. You know, actually, I got a quick story about that. One time I got stopped at the airport for having a box of business cards on my way to Ignite, uh, for having it in my luggage because they said it was organic matter next to a bunch of wires and so I had to go through extra security checks so down with the business card let's build a flow that gets rid of the business card ready let's go first go to my flows okay then go to new create from blank create from blank and put in a button now we're gonna put in a text input here and what I want is the name okay and so this is like let's say I'm at an event you come up to me and you say John do you have a business card? And I say, no, I don't. I have something better. And I pull out my phone. I hit the flow button. And now I need two pieces of information from you. Your first name. Let's go ahead and be even more specific. First name. And then let's add another input. And let's ask for your email address. Now, you might be wondering, why didn't I use the email address input? It's because this person is not going to be in my organization. And so this email picker thing is just going to have problems and so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pass both values in plain text and I suggest you do the same okay now that we have those the next piece of information here the next the next action here our first action is to send an email okay now if you wanted to be nefarious you could also collect this information and add it to your mailing list but if you do that, make sure that you send a warning email to the user, like making sure that you request using their email and adding them to their list and let them opt in. Don't, don't be shady. Nobody likes that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and choose send an email. Now, I have to fill in a few fields. So there's this to field. Well, I just asked them for their email address, right? So I'm going to go over here, click in the box. This drawer comes out. This is called the dynamic content picker. I'm going to click on see more because he, he likes to hide a lot of our content. See more. He's tricky. Okay. So once we click on see more, we can see the field that I asked for should be there. Should be called email address. And there should also be one called first name. So are they going to call them input and input one? That's interesting. So let's go ahead and add the first input. Now the second one, because that's going to be the email address, I'm pretty sure. The subject is going to be nice to meet you. And then in the body, I'm going to say hello. And I'm going to take the first input, which is their first name. So it'll be hello name. It was so great to meet you today. Instead of a crappy business card, I wanted to send you an email full of links that you could use to contact me. Right? And then we could just go on and add all of our links, right? So my website is www. Oh, that's four W's. JohnLevec.com. My Twitter is 
twitter.com. Why did I add an E? Right? My Instagram is my LinkedIn is and so on and so forth right and so we can set up this email where now instead of handing someone a business card where we possibly lose the conversation with them we have a sent email to their address from your personal email account which has all your information in it and now you can set up another flow that said oh you know what let's go ahead and delay and then we can set up a value of 15 days ahead and say, then once we reach that date, let's send another email. Okay? I'm not going to do that now because we're out of time. I'm going to save that for the next video because I'm already two minutes over the time limit I want it to be. All that flow button goodness in under 10 minutes. Now, three things that I need you to do. One, go and set up your first flow button. Two, mash on that like button. Three, go ahead and subscribe so you do not miss another video. As always, guys, much love from me. See you in the next video.